and welcome to this demonstration of ANSYS AIM. In this video I'll show you how to perform a stress analysis of the gear and rack system shown here. I'll show you how to use remote displacements and contacts in this type of analysis. We're designing a press that has to deliver a 2500 Newton force at the rack. The goal is to find the torque that the pinion must apply to the rack to generate this force. To do this, I'll work in reverse and apply the 2500 Newton force to the rack and measure the moment reaction at the inside face of the gear. In AIM, I'll start with the structural template, accept the defaults and create the simulation process, then select the geometry file. Once the geometry has been imported, I'll set an element size of 2 millimeters and generate the mesh. Because of the shape of the bodies, the mesher has been able to generate an all hex mesh, which is what we want because that gives us the least number of elements with the highest possible accuracy and helps stay under the limits of the academic versions of ANSYS. Next I'll turn to the physics task. By default, structural steel has been assigned to both bodies and I will leave that as is since that's the material I wanted to use. I need to add supports and the 2500 Newton force to the model. What I'll do is constrain the rack so that it can only move up and down in the Y direction and fix the pinion gear by applying a displacement boundary condition to the inside circle. This way I can recover the moment that it takes to resist the force that will apply to the bottom of the rack. So first to add the frictionless supports, select the two faces and add supports and change it from fixed to frictionless. Add the force to the bottom face reverse the direction and the magnitude of 2500 newtons. For the pinion gear I'll add a displacement boundary condition rather than a fixed one and here I'll check the box that says apply remotely from originating point. This creates a remote boundary condition and gives me access to all six degrees of freedom for that support. I will fix all of them but by having access to all six degrees of freedom I can recover the moment that it takes to resist the force. Next I'll turn to the interface conditions. Here AIM has created a pair of contacts between the gear and rack teeth. I want to change the behavior of this contact from bonded to no separation. This allows a slight movement although it keeps the two sides connected together. The simulation is ready to run now but I'll add two more result quantities to the contour plots that are already being generated. One is a contour plot of the contact status. And the other is a computed result, a calculated value of the moment reaction at the uh, displacement support that I added.
Okay, my model is ready to run now with the results that I want. The solution is complete and I can review the results now. Let's take a look at the displacement magnitude contour. The displacement of course is very small but the plot has been auto-scaled so that we can see the actual displacement. Next I'll take a look at the equivalent stress contour plot. In here as I expect the highest stress regions are at the base of the gear teeth and at the points of contact. And finally I'll take a look at the contour plot of the contact status. The orange areas show the surface areas where the teeth are actually making contact and there's a small amount of sliding. and this seems reasonable based on the geometry that we have. Finally I'll look at the moment reaction which is 91.9 .9 newton meters and that is what would be expected to be applied at the center of the pinion gear in order to, to resist the 2500 newton force that I applied here. In other words, if this were going to this system were going to be used in a uh, press, we could apply a 92 newton meter torque at the wheel and expect to have a 2,500 newton force exerted by the rack. Thank you for watching.